what's going on guys welcome back to my channel and another episode of weekend watch this is not the box office report i wanted for my most anticipated movie of the entire year joker foily adieu from now on i'm just calling it joker 2 because it's easier so joker 2 did open at number one we all knew that was going to happen without a doubt but the opening weekend number that was fluctuating it started off pretty high with about 75 million but then early previews on thursday were much lower than expected so then the industry lowered that expectation to around 50 million dollars and then when numbers kept getting lower they lowered the amount again to around 45 million so where did the amount land in its opening weekend $40 million. That is on par with Morbius. That is less than the Marvels and also the Flash. Now, the film did do better internationally. It made, I believe, around $80 million overseas. So the worldwide grand total right now for Joker 2 is sitting at around $121 million. However, for this film to break even, I believe it needs four to five hundred million dollars. I think it's safe to say it's probably not going to happen. So compared to the original movie, it's not it's not even going to get there. It's not going to be in the same realm as the original film. So what went wrong? I feel like what the the main issue of what went wrong is that the core major fan base of the original film just did not get what they expected. And that's not really the film's fault. And I'm probably going to get some flack for this because I'm falling personally for myself because I went to go and see the movie on Friday and I gave it a three and a half star. I didn't love the movie. It wasn't like the first Joker for me. I appreciated a lot of elements about the movie and what they were saying. So I didn't hate the movie either. I fell right in the middle and I gave it a three and a half star because I know where they were going. I know the vision that Todd Phillips had in his head. And I feel like the fan base, because Joker, well, Arthur Fleck at the end of the original film embraced the personality of Joker. I think we all thought that in movie number two, we are going to see him be full on Joker the entire time. He meets up with Harley Quinn and they're going to go off and have wicked adventures together and, you know, wreak chaos and havoc in Gotham. I think that's all we thought of. That's everything that was going to happen. But that does not happen in Joker 2. It's a completely different story. It's a courtroom trial. It's rehashing the first film. It isn't going forward with the chaos and the anarchy. It's really about Arthur reflecting and coming to realize things about himself. So it's kind of more emotional and mental and pulling on the heartstrings rather than excitement about Joker and Harley Quinn from the comics. I think that is where the disappointment lies and there were a lot of negative and mixed reviews, more negative than mixed, I will say that. But there were a lot of negative reviews from early screenings and Thursday night previews that were all over social media. So I do believe that a lot of people that did have plans to go and check out Joker 2 probably canceled their plans to go and see the movie because... If so many people are saying the movie is horrible, you're going to save your money or you're going to spend your money on a different movie. So I really do think that's what happened. I'm not blaming anyone. I'm, I'm not blaming the movie. I'm not blaming the fans. I'm just saying straight out my opinion as to why I think this movie failed. Well, not failed, but it just didn't deliver the way we all anticipated that it would. So it is extremely disappointing. And like I said, you know, I, I didn't mind it. I didn't mind it because the whole musical element, that's another reason why I'm sure a lot of people were turned off and maybe just didn't even want to give the movie a chance because there are major musical elements in this film. 
and musicals are not popular in today's society. I get it. I understand it. I don't mind them. I enjoy them. So that's probably why my experience was a little bit better than a lot of other people's. But you know what? I highly encourage you to just have an open mind. If you're even slightly curious about the film, go and give it a chance. Go and give it a chance. This is why we watch movies to see if we're going to like something. Don't listen to critics. Don't listen to other people. Go and judge for yourselves. That the, that's the best advice that I can give you guys. Go and watch it for yourselves and judge it for yourselves. But disappointing opening weekend for Joker 2. All right, now that I'm over five minutes in, let's talk about the rest of the top five. In second and third place, second place is The Wild Robot with 18.7 million. Third place belongs to Beetlejuice 2 with 10.3 million. And it's also important to note that Beetlejuice 2 worldwide is now over $400 million. So at least Warner Brothers has a definite secured hit with Beetlejuice 2. We all thought it was going to come with Joker 2, but it did not happen like that. So Beetlejuice 2 is reigning supreme for Warner Brothers. In spots four and five, fourth place is Transformers 1 with 5.3 million. And rounding out the top five is Speak No Evil with 2.8 million. Now, what is new at the box office this coming weekend to possibly give competition to Joker 2? We do have four major main brand new releases, a lot of variety, all different kinds of genres for you to choose from. I am putting them all up on the screen at the same time for you to look at. So we have Terrifier 3, Saturday Night, We Live in Time, and also Piece by Piece. Now, which one of these movies do I think is going to overtake Joker 2 and claim number one, if any of them? Well, I don't think it's going to be Saturday night. I feel like that's going to be a more limited audience and also limited show times. And same for We Live in Time, probably not everyone's cup of tea. Out of any of these movies, I think Terrifier 3 is definitely competition for Joker 2, but it's going to be close. I feel like it's going to be really close because remembering the numbers of Terrifier 2, I think they were decent, but they weren't overwhelming box office numbers and also limited show times as well. I know personally at my local AMC theater, it's really only playing at nighttime, a couple of showings a day, and that's it. It's never playing in the afternoon or, you know, mid-afternoon. So that's kind of disappointing that it is so limited because this is turning into a major horror franchise. And I do feel like they should expand and have more showings. So I think Joker 2 and Terrifier 3, those are the two movies that are going to be in competition for number one. I wouldn't be surprised if Joker remained at number one, but I feel like it's going to be close. And the reason why I think it's going to be close is because Terrifier 3, I think, is very anticipated. I feel like because it's taking place during Christmas time, that's going to pull people in. It's the perfect time of the year to see this movie. It's going to be mid-October at this point. It's spooky season. You know, all the elements are working. Plus, from Terrifier 2, that movie gained a lot of new fans, I think. And so all those new fans are looking forward to Terrifier 3. So it's going to be a close one. I think 1 and 2 are going to be Joker and Terrifier 3, and then everything else will fall where it falls. It'll fall where it lands. Something like that. (laughs) I thought that sounded correct, but when I said it, it didn't sound right. All right, now let's move on to streaming, because as I always say, there's always options on streaming for you, and we do have a ton of options this coming week. So if you're not interested in Terrifier 3 or Joker 2, then you can watch something else at home. So over on Netflix, we have Bad Boys Ride or Die. I believe this is premiering on Tuesday. So if you did not pick up the physical media, you wanted to wait for streaming, you did not have to wait very long. So Tuesday is your day for that. There's also a brand new film called Lonely Planet. 
Now over on Max, they are debuting a brand new horror mystery film called Caddo Lake. Caddo? Cato? Caddo. Caddo sounds better. Caddo Lake. There's also a brand new A24 film called Tuesday starring Julia Louis-Dreyfus. I may check that one out, possibly. I usually like A24 films, so I may want to may want to stream that one. Now over on Hulu, we have a brand new debut of Mr. Crockett. I heard this one was pretty decent. I think this one premiered at film festivals, I think Fantastic Fest or something, and people were liking it. It's like a fun little horror movie. So that one I may watch as well. And also Hulu is premiering the spider film Sting. And no, I'm still not watching it, even though I could just watch it for myself silently in my room and not talk about it, not admit it here on the channel. I am still not watching this because I hate spiders. You guys know this. So even though I could watch it for free on Hulu, no, I'm still not watching it. It freaks me out. I'm not going there. But if you don't mind spiders, check out Sting. All right, over on Amazon Prime, they are debuting a brand new um, limited series called Citadel Diana. I think I'm going to pass on that one. I don't think I have time. I'm trying to catch up on all the series right now. There's the Penguin. There's the Menendez Brothers series and Aaron Hernandez. Like, There's just so much that I'm watching right now as far as TV shows. So I don't think I have time for Citadel Diana, but you never know, maybe down the line, but not right now. All right, over on Peacock, we have another series debut from James Wan called Teacup. And that one sounds interesting. So you may want to check that one out. Paramount Plus has the debut of SpongeBob SquarePants Creepaway Camp. Nice little, uh, nice little spooky film for the kids, I guess. I don't know. And then finally over on Apple TV Plus, we have a brand new series starring Kate Blanchett. This one has me intrigued called Disclaimer and also a brand new documentary called The Last of the Sea Women. So that is everything new happening at the box office and also on streaming. So comment down below and let me know your thoughts about Joker 2. Did you go and see it? Did you check it out? What did you think of it? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Do you agree with me? You know, let's have a conversation. Comment down below and let me know. Don't forget to like and subscribe before you leave and I'll see you next time.